Thanks for watching, and today we will solve not a differential equation, not an integral equation, but an integral differential equation. Wow. So let's solve this, and by the way, this is not multiplication, this is convolution. Here's the definition of convolution if you're interested. Although we won't really need this because if you think of convolution as the poison, the antidote is the Laplace transform. And in fact, let's take the Laplace transform of this equation and see what we get. So beautiful L of phi prime minus one half beautiful L of this ugly convolution equals minus beautiful L of T. Now, what is L? It is what's called the Laplace transform, which has this definition, which we won't really need, but what we do need is the property that the Laplace transforms transforms differentiation into multiplication. So in fact, this thing just becomes S L of phi minus the initial value minus one half Another important property is that the Laplace transform transforms convolution into actual multiplication. So it becomes L of t squared times L of phi, so that's why it's so important, and minus Laplace transform of t. So now we do need some formulas. In general, the Laplace transform of t to the n, kind of like an integration rule, it's n factorial over s to the n plus 1. So you're adding 1 to the exponent. So here minus 1 factorial, which is 1, over s squared. Good. And then the rest is just plugging in and calculating, <laughs> just like math. So what we get now is s L of phi. So the initial value was 1 minus 1 half. So, L of t squared, again, 2 factorial, which is 2, and you add 1 to the exponent. So, s cubed times L of phi equals minus 1 over s squared. And now there's this nice simplification here. The 2 cancel out, and most importantly, there is no more derivative. Instead, we just have an algebra equation for L of phi, which we want to solve for now. So what this then becomes is s minus 1 over s cubed L of phi equals 1 minus 1 over s squared. And it turns out this one you can simplify tremendously. Because how about we put the left-hand side and the right-hand side under a common denominator? So what we get is s to the fourth minus 1 over s cubed L of phi equals s squared minus 1 over s squared. Now, we can already sort of cancel out the denominators. So this s squared cancels out with s cubed except for another factor of s. And then L of phi, so if you do, you know, uh, um, the reverse of the denominator is kind of, it becomes s over s to the fourth minus 1 times s squared minus 1. But the amazing thing is, this can be simplified even further, because s to the fourth is s squared squared. 1 is 1 squared, so you just use a squared minus b squared, and we end up getting that L of phi is s over s squared minus 1 times s squared plus 1 times s squared minus 1. And here comes the most satisfying moment of this video. Bang, bang! And we end up getting s over s squared plus 1. So, the Laplace transform of our mystery function is s 
over s squared plus 1. And if you are Laplace aficionado like me, you may recognize this as the Laplace transform of a very familiar function. Namely, it's just the Laplace transform of, drum roll, cosine. So, what is the solution of our integral differential equation? It's simply cosine of t. How crazy, right? You have this very simple function disguised under something very difficult. That said, integral differential equations are very important, especially when you want to model population dynamics. So there's this very famous Volterra equations that are integral differential equations. And what if you like Payam? I don't like the Laplace transform. Well, don't worry, I got you covered, because here is a more direct way of solving this, which is equally as interesting. But for this, we do need to use the definition of convolution. So this equation tells you phi prime of t minus 1 half integral from 0 to t, t minus tau squared phi of tau d tau equals minus t. Well, we do have an integral. So in order to get rid of the integral, let's just differentiate both sides. So prime and prime. Then, what we get is the following. So phi double prime of t. And now, to differentiate this integral, you got to use a Chen Lu, but it's a little bit more complicated because we have a t here and we have a t here. So to differentiate the outside t, we have derivative of an integral. So by the FTC, this is 1 half t minus t squared phi of t. And now we need to differentiate the inside stuff. So minus 1 half integral from 0 to t, this derivative, so 2 times t minus tau phi of tau d tau, and that becomes derivative of minus t, which is minus 1. Now, it looks scary, but the good news is this term here just becomes zero. And not only that, 2 cancels out. And well, the problem is we still have an integral, so we need to differentiate this once more. So phi triple prime of t minus, again, same thing. Derivative of the integral is just a function. So t minus t, phi of t, minus integral from 0 to t of the inside. So derivative of this is 1. So just phi of tau d tau equals 0. And once again, we have a nice cancellation. This becomes 0. And one last time, let's differentiate this, because this isn't bad at all. And we get phi quadruple prime minus derivative of integral is a function, minus phi equals 0, which is a much easier differential equation, because it's constant coefficient. So in this case, the auxiliary equation is arc fourth minus 1 but which can be factored out as r squared minus 1 times r squared plus 1. And so it's r minus 1 times r plus 1, and then r squared plus 1. And this one has four roots, 1 minus 1, i, and minus i. And in the end, we get the following general solution. Phi is a e to the t for the root 1, b e to the minus t, plus c cosine of t, plus d sine of t. But the question is, which is it? And for this, we need the initial conditions. So we know phi of 0 equals 1. What about phi prime? Well, 
If you plug t equals 0 in this equation, we get phi prime of 0 minus integral from 0 to 0, which is 0, equals minus 0, which is 0. And so the initial velocity is 0. What about phi double prime? Well, now we can plug into here. Phi double prime of 0 minus integral 0 to 0, which is 0, is minus 1. And finally, what would phi triple prime? Phi triple prime of 0 minus 0 equals 0. And so phi triple prime of 0 equals 0. And in fact, if you differentiate all those and you plug in a t equals 0 and you solve for a, b, c, and d, you should get that a equals 0, b equals 0, c is 1, and d is 0. And so our mystery function, once again, is just cosine. Wow. <gasps> All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.